In this tutorial, we'll take a look at permutations, but with uh, some kind of restrictions. In uh, the uh, first example here, I told that uh, Joe has four identical blue cards and three identical red cards. So he draws six cards at a time, and the question is how many arrangements are possible. Now there's a kind of restriction here, because there's only four blue cards and three identical red ones, and he's drawing six, he can't, for example, draw all six blue or all six red. In fact, he's restricted to, he either can draw a re two red and four blue, or three red and three blue. There's no other possibilities here. So there's a restriction here just because of how many different cards he has. So, for example, he cannot draw one red and five blue because he only has four blue available. So in order to uh, figure this out, it's really how many ways can you arrange uh, two, two identical red things and four identical blue things, and then the, the same with the three red and the three blue. So <clears throat> there's six objects here, and if, uh, remember, some of them are the same, you, uh, you reduce the um, number of possible permutations. So for example, uh, you could think of this as two R's two red R's and four um, uh, blue B's for example. So and there are of course the, the all the blue ones are identical, all the red ones are identical. So we would take <coughs> excuse me six factorial because there's six objects and divide by two factorial and also by four factorial because these uh, red ones are identical and so are those blue ones. And then so that's the ways he can he can select two red and four blue and this is the calculation for how many ways he can uh, select or arrange three identical red things and three identical blue things so we would divide six factorial by three factorial times three factorial and if you evaluate that um, divide it out this uh, first calculation worked out to 15 so there's only 15 ways he can select two red and four blue in uh, in uh, uh, different orders and there's 20 ways you can select uh, three red and three blues and of course that adds to 35. So altogether Joe can pick 35 different arrangements of cards that are either two red and four blue or three red and three blue. Now two events that cannot happen at the same time, for example, uh, you cannot at the same time select two red and four blue and also three red and three blue. It, it's po impossible to do that. Two events that cannot happen at the same time are said to be mutually exclusive. And so we get what's called the addition principle. If you have, if two actions, and this extends past two, are mutually exclusive and one can be done in m ways and the other one in n ways, then there are m plus and ways the action can be performed. So that's why in this page we added the calculation for how many ways you can get two red and four blue to how many ways you can get three red and three blue because they're mutually exclusive. So that's why we added the 15 and 20. There's 15 ways you could do it this way and there's 20 ways you can do it this way so altogether there's 35 different arrangements. So that's the addition principle for mutually exclusive uh, actions. In example number two it says, consider the five-letter arrangements of the word Southern. How many arrangements contain only constants? So there's a restriction. Um, constants do not include, of course, O, U, or E. So we're only talking about the S, the T, and the H, the R, and the N. And we're only, and here's another restriction too. We're only talking about five letters at a time. So there are there are five consonants. So well, I guess in that case we're actually arranging all of the consonants. So if there's uh, five of them, we could arrange them in five factorial ways, or five permute five would be the same calculation. And uh, five factorial is 120, so there's 120 different arrangements that contain only consonants. And B says how many start with an S and end with the letter N. So same as in the word Southern, starts with the first letter and ends with the last letter in the word Southern. So it would look like this. There's an S at the beginning and there's an N at the end. And so in the middle, now this is independent of A. We're not, we're ta not talking about just consonants. So we can be any three of the other letters from the O, U, T, H, E, and R. 
Now, so there's, if you count them, there's one, two, three, four, five, six letters between the O and the R, and we're, of course, selecting three of them here. And we're putting them in, in different arrangements. That's why this would be a permutation. Because, for example, if you go O-U-T, it's different than if you use the same letters, but go U-T-O, for example, in a different order. So that's why this is a permutation. So there's only, there's only one way to put the first letter, the S, and one letter to put in the end. Okay, they have to be in those spots so they don't change the total number of uh, permutations. The total number of permutations really comes from what's in the middle that can be in different arrangements. And so that would be 6 permute 3, which is 120. And C says, how many contain the letter U? Well, now the U does not have to be just at the beginning. But here, there's five arrangements here. So let's say the U is at the beginning. The other four letters are being selected from the seven possible letters. Remember, there's eight letters here all together in the word Southern, and we're saying that the U has to be one of them. So let's say the U is at the beginning. We could arrange these in seven permute four ways because of the fact that there's seven objects and we're, we're arranging four at a time. We're selecting four at a time. Now, we would multiply that by five because the U can be here or here or here or here or here. So there's actually five different places for the U to be. So so each one, the one that starts with a U at the beginning, there's seven permute four ways of doing that. The one that has the U in the second spot, there's seven permute four ways of doing that, etc. So we would multiply by five because there's five different places the U could be. And if we evaluate that, that works out to 4,200. So there's 4,200 ways of selecting five letters that have to have the letter U in them. For D, how many have the T and the H together? So, um, now there's still five letters. So we're saying the T and the H have to be together. So this is actually two places here. T and the H and three other letters. And the T and H do not have to be at the beginning. Um, and we'll, t we'll take care of that like the U didn't have to be at the beginning here. So let's say the T and the H are the first two letters. Then, if you remember, there's eight letters all together. There's three six other ones if you count them. So there's six different letters to go in these spots so we could select those in uh, six permute three ways. We can arrange those in six permute three ways. So if we're saying the TH have to be at the beginning in that order, uh, there's six permute three ways of that particular five letter arrangement. Now the T and the H um, could be either T first and H second or it could be H first and, and and, and T after it. So that's why we would multiply this by two because if there's two letters here, there's two ways for them to be written, um, either the T first or the H first. Now, <clears throat> the uh, T and the H could be in the first two spots or the second and third spot or the third and fourth spot or the fourth and fifth spot. So there's four different ways to do that. So again, first and second, second and third, third and fourth, fourth and fifth. Okay, there's four different ways for the uh, places kind of for the uh, T and the H to be. So that's why we would also multiply this by four. Kind of like the U could be in five different places, so we multiplied it by five. So that's the calculation. So a little under a thousand. There's 960 ways for the T and the H to be together. And example number three, uh, we've got a group of seven people that are sitting together at a high school graduation ceremony. And the first question is just how many ways can they sit together? So it's an arrangement of seven people taken seven at a time. So it's actually the permutation seven permute seven, which of course would be seven factorial. So there's 5,040 ways that they can be arranged. In B, it says how many ways can they sit together if two people must sit next to each other, perhaps they're a couple, or they just want to sit next to each other. So it's very much like on the previous page, the T and the H. Okay, we're, we're putting them together. So if they're together, <clears throat> then think of that, that as a, a couple. Okay, so that's one object, but it's actually two people. And then there's five other people. So there's this pair and there's five other people, which makes the seven all together. So it's really like arranging six objects. So we could arrange them in six permute six ways. But like the example on the previous page, we would also multiply that by two because let's say it was uh, Henry and Sue. 
Henry could be first and Sue second, or we could reverse it and put Sue second and Henry, or Sue first and Henry second. So that's why we multiply it by two. And we don't have to worry about um, um, the first and second, second, third, because if, if there are a couple, we're actually saying that can be arranged in um, the six permute six takes care of that. So that works out to 1,440 ways. In the last example, it says, how many ways can they sit together if two people must not sit next to each other? So perhaps they're, maybe they're a couple and they had an argument. They don't want to sit next to one another. Well, if you think of, okay, this is the total number of ways that, uh, actually, there, okay, there's a long way to do C. You could do, well, perhaps, let's say it's Henry and Sue again. Uh, Henry's first and Sue could be third, so there's somebody between them in the second spot. And Henry could be first and Sue could be fourth. Henry could be first, Sue could be fifth. Well, you could actually calculate all those and add them up, and that would be very, very long. Okay, but there is a shorter way to do this. The 5,040 is the number of ways that they can be arranged with no restrictions whatsoever. This is the number of ways they can be uh, sitting, they have to be sitting next to one another. So these two events, um, this is a total number, and this is the number of ways they can sit together. This down, what we're looking for down here, is an event that's mutually exclusive with this one. Uh, they're either sitting next to one another, or they're not sitting next to one another. These two answers from B and C should add to the 5,040, because either they're sitting next to one another, or they're not. There's no other possibility. Okay, so a quick way to get C is to take the total amount and the 7 factorial and subtract the um, uh, 1440 from it. So 5040 minus 1440 is uh, 3600 ways. So there's 33,600 ways that they could not sit next to one another. Uh, circular permutations. Now circular just means uh, there's no real start. It doesn't have to be around a circle. It uh, could be around uh, a rectangular table, and if there's no start, they're just sitting around it, then that's still, this, that's still referred to as a circular permutation. The number of ways, and when there's no beginning and end, it reduces the number of ways things can be arranged. The number of ways a set of n objects can be arranged in a circle or around something with no start and end is n factorial divided by n. And n factorial divided by n is actually 1 less than n factorial. For example, if n was 10, 10 factorial divided by 10 is actually 9 factorial. So uh, it's the number of objects minus 1 factorial. Just to give you an example that that actually works, in example 4 it says list all the ways four letters, A, B, C, and D, can be arranged on a circle. Now there's four letters. Uh, if we use this formula, uh, 4 minus 1 is 3, and so it should be, there should be three factorial ways, and which is 6. And so if you actually write them all out, so let's say we did uh, A, B, C, and D. Now, so that's an arrangement around the circle A first, B second, C afterwards, and D afterwards. Now, if I were to put the D up here and move the A over here and the B down here and then the C over there, that's the same arrangement. That does not make a different permutation because it's a, a certain order around the table. Even if I, you know, move A two spots and B two spots to here and C here and D over here, that's still the same arrangement because if you go around the circle, let's say clockwise, B is after A and C is after B and D is after C, etc. Okay, so that's one way to do it. So, in fact, I, actually all I'm doing is actually just listing all the different ways and you could try to you know list uh, different ways around the circle but those are actually all of them all those are all the different orders that uh, you could put four things around a circle or a rectangle or whatever so uh, that actually just is a demonstration that this formula works it's not a proof uh, it's just an example with uh, with four objects uh, one last example uh, how many ways could 22 knights sit around King Arthur's table? So here's a circular permutation. They're sitting around, remember his table actually was supposed to be round. So, so it's 22 objects, so uh, we would evaluate 21 factorial, one less than the number of objects. So 21 factorial is a pretty big number. If you, put, if you punch that in your calculator, you'll get this. It'll be like 5.109, etc. And then there'll be over here like a 19, which means times 10 to the power of 19. It's in scientific notation. So this, if you wrote this out as a standard number, that 19, remember, means that you'd move the decimal 19 places in, in to the right here. So it's a huge number. So that's approximately 51 quintillion. So there's a lot of ways.
So there are approximately 51 quintillion ways for 22 knights to sit around King Arthur's round table. And that's the end of the tutorial.